So I, I think that we can all agree without getting into the semantics of it, that nature is beautiful, like snow-capped mountains, sunlight breaking through the trees in a forest, the sunrise, like these are beautiful outside of any cultural construction of beauty. I don't think that this is a controversial statement, but who knows. To take it one step further, there are, from time to time, moments when I think that some man-made structures complement nature and actually enhance the experience of beauty. Obviously, now we're getting into some subjective territory and the ways that the perception of beauty might be conditioned into my visual habits, but I think, for example, that the way that the geometric lines and color of the Golden Gate Bridge popping out of the fog and interacting with the Golden Hills of Marin is beautiful, or the ways that some Italian churches pop up on a hill and bring the landscape together. That's beautiful. In these cases, it is the interaction between the sharp Euclidean shapes of man-made objects and the organic fractal qualities of nature that seem to complement each other. Compositional elements that seem to be incompatible somehow just fit together sometimes. Their differences are reconciled. And with this in mind, I want to look at and talk about the paintings of Fiona Ray. Whenever I come across a painting of hers in a museum like this one at the Modern Art Museum in Lisbon, which I saw this past summer, I can't help but feel like I'm having the same experience of beauty that I get from seeing something like the Golden Gate Bridge. Her paintings are, are fun. I think that's part of why they stand out in galleries for me and why I'm drawn to them from across the room. They're bright and energetic and somehow I feel like they're telling a story, but obviously not the narrative way that neoclassical paintings tell a story. Like, take a painting like this for example. The clean geometric circles interact with drips and smeared dark paint that obscures but also mixes with the green-yellow background. There are elements of gestural abstraction like this that evoke a movement acted out on a canvas with all the raw and imperfect humanity that usually accompanies that type of art. There are brushstrokes that look like a Franz Klein painting or drips that look like a Pollock. And those appear next to meticulously drawn circles that evoke the geometric abstractions of artists like Kandinsky. Like these are different styles of abstraction. According to the little boxes art historians use to categorize styles, the paintings of Fiona Ray are a mess. They seem to try everything at once, defy categorization, and be fun about it. They're reconciling the differences. And it's not like she only does abstraction. There are oftentimes formal elements in her art, like take this one, that clearly has leaves in it. Leaves clearly outlined in black that almost evokes cartoon illustrations, alongside ink blots that look like raw shock tests or my parents fighting. She's combining different forms of abstraction, mixing figurative art and abstract art. And she also has some paintings with little cartoon pandas or these little figures that look like bears made from gingerbread or something. She's said of these little cartoon figures that she includes that they function like indestructible superheroes. They're quite personal and have something to do with finding a way to live with authority. They puncture the authority of the gestural brush marks and the grand tradition of modernist painting, which is still there, of course. So the paintings are defiant, but at the same time, they're still going to church. Like, to see a cartoon right next to a brushstroke of gestural abstraction, one of them should look obviously out of place, but they just don't. She seems to pull in an aesthetic vocabulary that ranges from Kandinsky to Mickey Mouse. There is no hierarchy or authority between high and low cultural, figurative art or abstract art. Sometimes her brushstrokes evoke a Victorian aesthetic, other times her brushstrokes show the influence of her youth, which was spent in Hong Kong and Indonesia. A wide variety of styles find a home in her composition. The differences are reconciled right there on the canvas. Dave Hickey once said that Fiona Ray's paintings strike him as the kind of painting you make when you're on your own, when you can't depend on anyone for anything, when you can't improvise or update anyone or harmonize with anyone. So much of art history depends upon artists responding to each other. Pre-Raphaelites responding to Raphael. Raphael updating Michelangelo's methods. Michelangelo updating Giotto and forever backward into prehistoric cave art. I remember seeing a tweet by Jerry Saltz that I, I, can't, I just can't find anymore that said something about how we can't be certain what the first work of art ever was, but we can be sure that the second work of art was a response to the first. Like, there's a sense that if the moment in time an artist is working within demands something like geometric abstraction, then you're either working within that framework and trying to innovate within the conventions of geometric abstraction, or you're doing the opposite 
responding to those conventions by erasing them or refuting them. This is like Robert Rauschenberg literally erasing a de Kooning in 1953, Duchamp putting a urinal in a gallery or drawing on the Mona Lisa. Art is a constant discourse of artists responding to each other about what art can do, an ongoing referendum on how we experience and perceive the world. Fiona Ray's paintings, Hickey implies, stand outside of that game. Her paintings flatten the hierarchy implied by that process of art history, of updating and confronting and refuting. She pulls from everything, negates nothing. Those conflicts between styles are contained within the borders of her canvas, and they're resolved right there. Hickey also claims that her paintings show us what good art will look like after the idea of good art dissolves, when all the styles dissipate and the hierarchies are removed and every artist represents an artistic style of their own making, a future that will grant every viewer their own individual aesthetic without judging the aesthetics of others. Hickey said that Ray's paintings show us what happens when the energy associated with breaking rules is dissipated. The sense of community that is asserted by obeying than breaking the rules dissolves, and art becomes more wholly visible, more democratic, more inclusive, and more self-evident, and ephemeral for being on its own. I think I'm drawn to them the same way that I'm drawn to those moments when architecture enhances the beauty of the natural world, the oppositions that we create in our head about civilization versus nature, high art versus low art, figurative versus abstraction, digital versus analog. They don't need to exist, or they don't need to exist in conflict or be defined by hierarchies. The art critic Sarah Kent once said that in Fiona Ray, painting becomes a demonstration of optimism rather than a reflection of it. And I think that's why I've been particularly drawn to her work during the pandemic. Everything seems to be on the verge of falling apart. Those little figurative superheroes stand up to the emotional energy of the gestural marks those deposits of emotional outbursts that must exist and cannot be ignored. These paintings show us how a canvas can hold it all together and resolve the tension between diverse visual languages into a beautiful resolution. I'll put a link to her website in the description so you can explore these compositions on your own time. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.